grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why I have to be here tonight. Because Jesus gives us this marvelous example for all of the children of God to follow. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? It's not an option for Jesus. He didn't just choose on a whim to stay behind in Jerusalem following that Passover feast. You see, now he is an adult. That's what's significant about him being age 12. He's undergone what would at that time be known as his bar mitzvah, where he becomes a son of the word. It's like our confirmation, where once you are confirmed, you are considered an adult member of the Christian congregation. So it is with Jesus now that he is 12. And so now that he, though not having grown fully, in wisdom and stature, nevertheless, must now be about the business of his father. And that is saving us. That's all his business is. It's the business of saving. Saving people. And that's what makes us different on a night like tonight. We know that. We believe it. Unlike the world, which has conformed itself to what it sees in this world, and when it sees something sad happen, not just to a family, but to that extended family and even the Christian brethren who join in the mourning over a lost Christian sister out of this life. They look at it as though the God we worship must be powerless. Why didn't he stop this? Or that he is uncaring. Poor fear done. Poor fear done. Or that he himself would be somehow involved in the business of putting someone to death. But that's not his business. That's the devil's business. The devil, who had no business coming into this world and wrecking God's good creation so that now these types of tragedies and all of the troubles that we experience in this life come upon us. He who had no business coming into this world did and wrecked it all for us all. That's why God is in the business that he is in. God the Father who loves his children with an everlasting love. Who sent his son who now, at the first opportunity that he has, enters the family business, the business of saving us. 
Here he is, studying the word, asking the teachers questions. And then when they ask him, he wows them with his answers, all of which point to the boy child sitting before those teachers. He's the answer to every question because he is the Savior. All of the Old Testament prophecies about that pointed to him. And that's why the teachers would marvel when he would answer exactly that way. As in our first reading for this night, I didn't choose that one. It's the one assigned for this first Sunday after Epiphany. But it couldn't have been a better choice for our hearing on this night. But it speaks first and foremost of Jesus. As Isaiah prophesies of him, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor in spirit. This is the business of Jesus now. It's my business. And that's why I must be here to be with God's people to proclaim these good tidings, to know, to say that those who fall asleep in faith in Jesus are with him even now. And why that's so important was there was no way of even predicting, even guessing, when we left from here last Sunday, for that matter, last Wednesday, that this would be the topic of our consolation on this night. This is why he makes it his business to come by his word and his spirit as we are together here to transform our minds, to give us a real understanding of life in this world. That yes, sometimes it just is plain awful just is. Things happen to us that we far rather wish would happen to somebody else. But happen they do because this world is broken and unfair and we are broken both in body and in spirit. But this is why this Jesus is here. Even now. Even tonight. The Holy Spirit is upon this Jesus who has anointed him in his baptism, has now commissioned him as an adult in the church in his bar mitzvah to come and save us by his word. The word that proclaims to us the forgiveness of all of our sins, our triumph over death, because we have been baptized into his death and his resurrection that is something that the world simply does not understand that's why the world mourns at a time like this as people who have no hope because they have no hope they don't have the hope that we have that Jesus has made it his business to bring to you to us all. He must be about his father's business because he loves us that much. To make the very heart and center of his life in this world about you, about Christina, about us all. He must be about not only his father's business, 
but our Father's business. That's why he has come, that we might not only live life in this world for however many days we are given, but forever with him. That's our comfort. That's our hope. That is our peace at such a time as this. And that's why this is now our business together. Here as his body. The body of Christ means that we do what he does in his body. So we too must be about our father's business of bringing that saving, consoling, comforting word to each other as we are given opportunity, as God himself has equipped us, as he puts us in mind by his apostle, St. Paul, we are all not given the same function in this work, but we are all members of that same body and working together to bless one another with such consolation in comfort and peace as we've experienced in the most recent days how marvelous the Lord's working is such a time as this the world yet needs to hear this and again this is why we're here and engaged in this business why we spend so much time and energy treasure and talent so that the world might know, that they might hear this word and believe it like you believe it, to, to put it in your mind, to take it to heart and let it transform your mind and your heart as you live out this one faith in this one God who makes it his business to save you, even from death forevermore. God grants such peace to us in the midst of our mourning. Truly he binds and heals our broken hearts with his love which lasts forever. God grant this to us all for Jesus' sake, his Son, our Savior. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.